Holidays are over, folks. Time to get back to work. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and this is Monday, July 8th. What are you laughing at? Oh, the beard. Yeah, I uh, changed conditioners, and, well, who knew? <laughs> Come on, it's hardly noticeable. Moving on. What we like to do on this show, folks, is focus in on hot penny stocks. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find everywhere. They're on every single market. And I am constantly looking for stocks that have potential, that are catching attention, that can make us some money. And that's what I've got today, folks. We are looking at Maxian Solar Technologies, ticker M-A-X-N. Now, this stock is catching attention. You can tell by looking at the volume. It has been exploding, not just today, but over the last week. We have a lot of investors into this. We have a lot of shorters into this. But the chart isn't looking that great, but it is volatile. She moves around in wicked patterns, and right now we could get a strong gain out of this. Now, over the last year, she's had three attempts at breaking up, and they were solid attempts. They were good timing, but they failed, each one of them. And the last one happened right before her financial came out in May. When the financial came out, uh, let's just say it wasn't impressive, and the stock fell. Fell to an all-time low of about 16 cents, and right now she is bouncing off of that. Now, when it comes to news, I really can't say there's a lot of good news for the company. I mean, there's a lot of things happening on the darker side, and maybe that has something to do with all the volatility. But the main reason we're looking at this is because of the volume increase over the last five days and all the attention, and there is a lot of short interest on it. Now, just so we're perfectly clear here, I'm a day trader. I know what short interest is. I can see the numbers, but I don't plan my trades around short interest. I mean, honestly, it's like trying to predict when a tornado is going to hit and where. It's really tough. And as a day trader, to say it's going to happen in the next few days, no, no, no. I just think of that short interest as being a wild card. And if it's in my deck, fantastic. If not, I can live without it. We got that wild card in this deck. So, Maxson, she finished a day at just over 26 cents, and she was up 8.75% today. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the NASDAQ, meaning there are no transaction fees. You can trade it for free. You can trade it pre-market, after-market. You need to pay attention to stocks on the NASDAQ, pre-market, after-market. There are some huge moves during those periods, primarily because there's less investors. The algorithms change. Things can move faster on less volume. Also, there's a lot more rules up there, folks. You don't get burned as often playing stocks upon the major exchange because they have to jump through hoops and keep proving themselves. They get away with way too much down on the OTC, and we normally are the ones that pay for it. So what is Maxian Solar about? Well, they are a solar company. They deal with solar panels, but they do a lot of other things as well. They bring in the power through those solar panels. They then distribute it to a storage unit, as a lot of companies are doing. And then they are also working with discharging that stored electricity into like EVs and whatever else you want to use. So they are expanding their business. They tell us here, we are the global leader in solar innovation. I bet all the solar companies say that. Built from 35 years of boundary pushing solar DNA. Maxian Solar Technologies was launched August 26, 2020 as a spin-out from Sun Power, and they went up to the NASDAQ. Maxian Solar Technology designs, manufactures, and sells advanced Sun Power and Maxian branded solar panels to customers in more than 100 countries worldwide through a global network of more than 1,700 sales and installation partners. It's a pretty big organization. Now, I want you to take a look at this picture here, folks. That picture there bothers me big time. I used to be a roofer. For 20 years, I roofed, tearing them off, putting them back on. And what they're doing right there is a bloody sin to the roof. You see that rack? You see them brackets? Every one of those brackets have two bolts or one bolt that go into the roof, putting a hole through your roof. Those are all potential leaks. And you know how many of those there are holding up solar panels? Lots. And the worst part is the solar panel is laying over top of them. 
any pipe or bolt going out or through the roof needs to be cemented every single year to make sure water doesn't come in. Well, you can't even get to them with the solar panels on top. You got to remove every solar panel to get to them. Why am I going on about this? Because they solved that problem. Now it's funny, I couldn't find any information about this product over at Maxian's website. It is their product, but I do have information over here at SunPower, but they give credit to Maxian. SunPower from Maxian Solar Technologies. What they have got is what they call Maxian Air. It is super duper thin folks, thinner than a pencil. It is four millimeters thick and this gets away from the brackets. They actually adhere this to the roof with different types of adhesive depending on what kind of roof you've got. No holes, no up in the air. It is super duper flat right on your roof. I think that's hot. I can't help but wonder if they have run into liability issues where water has come in through the roof and they were held responsible for the damage. Very well could be. Now I've got some other information I want to share with you here from their most recent financial. Now this is a foreign company. So this is a 20F and it is long. Your foreign financials have a lot of extra international information. And this company isn't just working in one foreign country, they're working in a lot. So there's over a hundred pages in this. I am only gonna look at four pages, page 21, 34, 44, and 51. I wanted to remember so I didn't get lost scrolling. Our sales are made to customers in over 100 countries. And similarly, a substantial portion of our supply agreements are with supply and equipment vendors distributed globally. We have solar cell and module production lines located at our manufacturing facilities in Malaysia, Mexico, and the Philippines. We also acquire performance line solar modules from HPSV, which operates in China. Going down to page 34 now, almost there. <laughs> This is very important. The market price for Maxian shares has been highly volatile and subject to wide fluctuations. During the period from when they got spun out, August 26, 2020, till the end of December of 2023, the price has moved from $3.91 to $57.97. And at that time, May 21, 2024, we were at $2.71. And what are we at right now? 27 cents. So she is still falling, folks. Page 44. Here we go. Some of their business developments. On May 19th of 2023, we completed an underwritten public offering of 7.5 million shares at a price of $28 a share. Do you hear that? You and I are buying our shares right now at 27 cents. They sold shares at $28 a share, May 19th, 2023. In addition, May 16th, 2023, we sold to TZESG in a private placement, 1.5 million ordinary shares for a total investment of $42 million from that company. The net proceeds from the company's offering, the one up here and the TZE private placement together was $193 million that they put into their bank. On October 6, 2023, we completed the acquisition of certain assets from Complete Solara Inc. And there's a lot of information we can get into there. I'm going to let you do that. Last page we need is page 51. During fiscal year 2023, 57.4% of our revenue was attributed to North America, while 34% was attributed to the Middle East and 7% to Asia Pacific, and then less than 1% to other markets. So the lion's share of their business is here in America. The other big portion of their revenues is coming from the Middle East. That's really all the information I've got that I want to share with you, but there is a ton of of information in here folks they do lay it out with headlines you can get information on every single product that they sell new products they're working on money they're investing I read they have over 400 million dollars they're investing right now uh, they've got a lot of things going on 
And there's a lot of information in here, but I'm going to warn you. It's going to take you some time to read it. This is a huge document. So let's go take a look at the relative volume for the company today. As you can see, her volume has exploded today, but not just today. It's been running since last Wednesday. As an average, over the last 30 days, she's been doing about 35 million shares a day. Today, she kicked that up, I don't know, 12, 13 times to 479 million. That's a ton of extra attention. Now, if we jump on over here to Yahoo Finance, we can get a better insight to what's going on with this volume. You come down here to historical data, you can see every single day's information, every day. You can see the open, the close, the high, the low, and the volume for every single day. Now, down to that yellow mark right there, that's an entire month right there. Got it all in there. As you can see, we were in single digits for our millions back here. Broke out to 14 million here. That was on the 17th of June. Went back to single digits. Then she started to pick up some momentum again, going to double digits, 13, 14. And then Wednesday, she exploded, going to 173 million. Then jumping on Thursday to 202 million. Friday, she hit over a half a billion shares. And today, we've got 479 million, almost another half a billion. So in the last four trading days, she has had well over a billion shares move. You gotta pay attention to a stock that's moving that many shares. That's a lot of volatility. Share structure for Maxen. Outstanding share count isn't bad. We're at about 54 million. Now, they don't tell us what the insiders own. They don't tell us what the float might be. We get no extra information here. However, I can whittle it down a little bit. If we take a look at some of the filings, we're not going to look at the filings now because we're looking at them here. These are 13 G's and 13 D's that were filed. 13 G's and D's are whenever you have a new owner come on board. They're big investors. They buy so many shares, they own a percentage of the company. Sometimes these are just investment companies, hedge funds. Sometimes they're individuals. Sometimes they're other companies. You never know. Well, we've had a few of these, three of them in the last two months, and then we had a couple back in February. The ones we just had here recently. On the 14th of June, we had Cohen Financial invest for 2.7 million shares. On the 21st of June, Zhao Guan Singapore Investment and Development got themselves 13.1 million. And then on the 8th of July, Wellington Management got themselves 5.6 million. Well, add all those shares up, just those, you're looking at roughly 28 million. And I don't know what the insiders own, but I'm sure they've got something. Well, that's getting close to about 24, 25 million without knowing what the insiders own. So it's not going to be any higher than 24 or 25 million and honestly could be considerably less. Whatever it is, it's a pretty decent float to be working with. Absolutely. Market cap for the company, just about 13 million. Take a look at those financials. We've got some splaining to do, Lucy. All right, this is looking over the last four years back to 2021. Now they were making good revenues. We got to add three zeros to any of these numbers. They tell us that up here. So we're looking at $844 million at the beginning of 2021. That's when their fiscal year ended, January. They dropped a little to $783 million, then busted out in 2023 with over a billion dollars. But look down here. They were never making a penny. They were losing all that money plus more. Then they changed their fiscal year from January to December, and that must have helped because not only did they get their revenues up $1.1 billion, they're also starting to make some profit. Now, before we get too excited, that's not a lot of profit. Yes, thank God we got to add three zeros to it. It's $78 million. I know that sounds like a lot, but when you <laughs> consider they had to spend over a billion dollars to get that, they're going to have to tweak that formula. It's coming down to the quarterlies. We don't get a quarterly here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over here to Yahoo Finance. They give us more information. Here is our annuals. We just looked at those. Let's dive into our quarterlies. Yeah. So looking over the last year's worth of quarterly reports, 
what we see, the most recent quarterly report came out and it was bad. We're at 187 million. Comparing that to a year ago, we're down like 40%. Comparing that to the quarter before, we're down. I don't know how much, but we're down. And that's what really bothered people. Plus, they made projections. They anticipate to do like 160 to 200 million the next quarter. Well, that's still under the last quarter. So people aren't real excited about the financials. That's got them bumming as well. A little bit more dark news. Balance sheet. Um, let me see. Can we get the balance sheet over here and maybe a little more current? By the way, TTM, that is trailing 12 months. That's always an interesting piece of information you can put to use. This is how much money they've made in the last 12 months. If their year ended right now, they would have $992 million that they had made in the last 12 months. Now, let's take a look at that balance sheet. Oh, let me back this up. I moved it, and we're going to have to open this up for us. Total assets as of December 2023, they had just over a billion it was a billion plus two million. <laughs> Liabilities, we have uh, just under a billion, actually. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Just under a billion. So they're telling us here we have $4.6 million of stockholder equity. Now, when I was over here reading, they said we had total assets of $1 billion, $2 million. We had total liabilities of $1 billion, $3 million. So over here, they tell us that we are down about a million. Now, is this the quarterly? This is the quarterly. The other one was the annual. So at the end of December, we were up. At the end of April, March, we were down about a million. Now, I think we've already looked at all of these. There's your SC13G, 13D. Those are all those investments, all those shares. Let's take a look here at this 6K. Can't remember what this one is. Legal proceedings. Ah, yes. So, I want to talk to you about the news. Now, over here, we don't have any news. It may pop up now just to prove me a liar. But, uh, all right, as you can see, it takes forever to pop up, even if there's nothing. So, I went over to Yahoo. I found a couple pieces of news, but nothing catalytic. First off, we've got one here that came out June 19th. The company, Maxion, is suing ICOs, European Partners, for patent infringement. They feel very confident about this. There was also another class action lawsuit that was brought up by stockholders. That's nothing unusual. I'm sure if you look at most penny stocks that have fallen hard, you're going to see lawsuits against them by begruntled stockholders. Most of those really don't ever go anywhere. The stockholders claim that things didn't happen as management said they were, and normally they're just reading between the lines or inferring it. The other piece of news we're not going to take a look at was a contract they did with a huge dairy farmer. The dairy farmer got about 732 solar panels, so it was a big contract. So the company's in business. They're making money. Looks like they're starting to make a profit. They're right at break even right now for us. I don't know if we're four million up or a half a million down, but they're right at that break even point. So that's what's going on with the company. Lots of dark news. There isn't a lot of catalyst to push this up, but there's a lot of traders, whether they are for it or against it. That means investors or shorters. There is a battle going on there. And with the battle, you get volatility, you get pops. And with that wild card in there, you could have a short squeeze. And a short squeeze can be amazing, folks. Best thing I can say, though, if she starts to run and it looks like she's going parabolic and turning into a rocket stock, sell on the way up. Rocket stocks always run out of fuel flying up that high. And where do they go when they run out of fuel? Down. <laughs> they crash real fast. And it's better to sell while she's climbing fast than it is while she's falling fast. Let's go take a look at that chart now. We're doing some charting now on my best friend's back. This is Thinkorswim, my free trading platform. We're taking a look at Maxian Solar Technicals. This is ticker MAXN. Got her opened up to a one-week, three-year chart. Now, we're looking at a high here on our three-year chart of $38.91. They told us since August of 2020, 
till December of 2023, they hit a high of almost $58. So that had to be somewhere before July of 2021. Off of this high, well, there's not much to say except Geronimo, because it went all the way down, folks, further down than it has ever been before, hitting this ultimate low of just over 16 cents. Now down here, something else happened. We had a ton of volume come into the picture. We have never seen this much volume before. Let's come on down to our one day, one year view. Now we've got a high of $28.50 about a year ago. She came down underneath that 200 and never looked back, hitting that low down here of 16.6 .6 cents. Lots of volume, but the oscillators are still very weak, all of them pushing down, except our RSI. Now it's low, it's freezing. It's below the basement floor of 30. It is down there at 26, but it is climbing. That's something. Take a look at that six month, four hour view. All right, now things are starting to change, trying to change. Our 200 day SMA was falling fast and furious here and then started to level off, which gave us a chance to break out. And it was a pretty nice run. She went from 393 up to 792. Then for unknown reasons, she started to fall and kept falling right through the 200 without even slowing down. Then she had another wimpy attempt to try to jump here. But what do you see? A big M. At the end of the M, you normally have a fall, and that's what we got here. And it dragged the 200 down with her. Then she started to run here in May. She was pushing off of 190, hit a high of about $4.00 and bounced off that 200 day SMA many times as she was waiting for these SMAs to come aboard. Everything crossed over. This is looking picture perfect for a run and then they had to go and ruin it with their financials. That's exactly what happened here. She dropped from $3.22 down to a buck. Bouncing back up to two and a quarter and then falling all the way down to that low. Now we can see we have had volume coming in, as we know, since Wednesday, and it has been growing and growing over a billion shares in four days. Our chart doesn't look all that strong. All we know is we've got a lot of volatility. What I'm seeing here is all the volume has come in. She has been hitting her head on this 50 day SMA and can't get over it. Every time she hits it, she falls. And this last time she fell hard. Well, we're going to try again. We've got our 200 haul right here, which isn't starting to curve yet. Nothing is actually turning up. Every single SMA is pushing down right now, including our nine day. All of our oscillators are not looking all that great. The only thing I can say here that looks good and kind of out of place is right here. You see this hourglass shape we got going on? This is my PPO, percentage price oscillator a lot like your MACD. You read them the same, but the MACD uses the whole price and your percentage price oscillator uses a percentage of the price. And this is my ADX. I call this trend continuation. Whenever you have a straight line on the board, and it doesn't matter if it's going up or down or sideways, any straight line means whatever trend is on the board is continuing. Well, this line was going up, doesn't matter. Right here, we can see the line changed. It was going straight and then started to climb. Well, this is where our downfall started. And right here, when she started to turn green, our line changed direction. When you see these two lines separating from each other, my PPO blue line going up and my ADX red line going down, if those two are separating, guaranteed 100% your price is rising. So even though we can't see it here on our four hour chart, my oscillators tell me she is starting to rise. Even my MACD is rising with a lot of green bars there. I overlooked that first glance. Take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. All right, it's not looking super pretty. That is a very strong downtrend and we really don't have any leveling out on our 200, which is what I'd be looking for. Our 200 haul. I like to see the price on top of the 200. We got on top of it here. She had a nice break through the 200 and then back down. And now she's just rambling around, not showing any direction except a downtrend. Now things have changed here. We had a downtrend really increase here and then she stopped falling. So we do have a trend change. She's going sideways here. Our last two days, she has started to climb. She's getting on top of all of her SMAs here. 
a couple of our SMAs, our 20 and our 50, are starting to turn up a little bit of hope. Our oscillators, not looking so good here. My PPO is falling, my MACD is coming underneath my signal line, and my RSI is falling pretty quick. Come on down to that five day, five minute. <laughs> That's the best chart we've seen. Five days ago, we were at a buck 18. Fell down here to 17 cents. Went sideways. Should have tried to break out right there. When you get that close to the 200, you should be getting on top of it. She didn't. She laid underneath it for like two days. She got on top of it here. She's just barely floating on top of it. And now she's cresting up underneath again. All this volume. And all we can say is she quit falling. She's not climbing. I mean, she is a wee bit, but for the most part, she's going sideways. But our 200-day SMA, which was falling very hard here, has leveled off right here on Friday and is now starting to come up. This price needs to turn around or it's going to pull that 200 down. All of our SMAs, <laughs> all of our SMAs are on top of the price. The price just jumped on top of our nine-day SMA, trying to make a move. Oscillators say that's exactly what's going on. Things are just now starting to turn up. Every single oscillator, this is the first time, have turned up and are trying to make a move up, though I don't see a lot of strength. What we've got here, folks, is a lot of volatility. That is the bottom line. We have got... Did you see that? Shook the world, didn't I? <laughs> we have got a lot of investors here. We've got a lot of shorters here. It is a battle. I'm not crazy about shorters bringing the price down. But if we can push the price up above their, their point, you got to remember, they got their shares at a certain price. They can't have the price go above that. If they go above that, they have to buy shares. You and I sell shares when we want to get out. They have to buy shares when they want to get out. And if the price starts rising, they have to buy them at the expensive price, which pushes it up even more so that the next shorter is now in hot water. And he's got to buy shares and he's pushing the price up. And we, the investors, can just sit back and let the shorters buy all those shares they got to cover and watch that bad boy start to run. But as I said, if you see this thing start to run, if it starts to go parabolic, don't get greedy. Sell something, 25%, 30%. Sell half if it hits 100% and get all your money back and then start working with house money. You'll have the exact amount of shares you sold still inside, still being able to run. She goes another 50% or another 100%. For God's sake, folks, sell another half. I know you think you're losing money because you're taking away gains that could be there. But if you don't sell while she's climbing, as soon as she runs out of fuel and starts falling, you're going to be selling as she's falling fast. And as you're putting in your order, she's falling, 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 and you're going to end up very unhappy. So sell as she's going up. And if you want to have fun, save 10% of your holdings for the end and see if you can find that ceiling. Test yourself. Take everything out, make all that money, keep 10% of your holdings, and see if you can get to the absolute top and catch that ceiling before she crashes. It's good practice, and you're not risking anything. So I did hop around on the information on this stock. There is a lot of information out there, but most of it is in that financial, the 20F. Have fun reading that. You can jump around Google. You will find some pieces of news out there. That's not going to hurt either. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Thank you.